Hello, <coughs> welcome to this short tutorial on using the DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, you can buy the DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor in a small plastic package for a pretty small amount of money. It's a tiny thing, it comes in a nice white plastic package with four legs on the end. No fiddly soldering, soldering required. If we have a look at the data sheet for the DHT22, we can see the four legs Leg 1 is the power supply, leg 2 is the data, and 3 and 4 just go to ground. So that's pretty easy to wire up to our Arduino. We stick the first pin into the plus 5 volts or 3.3 volts uh, connector on the Arduino. We take the second leg and we stick it to any digital I.O. pin. I put it in 22. And the other two legs go to ground. So we have a pretty simple setup. Now, the next thing we need to do is uh, write an Arduino program, which is going to read the data out of that. Now, we can do that using a library. Uh, there is an Arduino code library, uh, looks like this, which we can use to save us a lot of programming. Makes the process very quick indeed. Uh, we install this by copying this uh, the, the library code into um, into a DHT22 folder under libraries under our Arduino system. Uh, if I just overwrite that. Now, we've copied those files into a DHT22 folder under the libraries on the Arduino folder on my computer. Now, I happen to know there is a small bug with this library, which means it doesn't work quite as we want with the Arduino Mega that I'm using. So I'm going to open Visual Studio and I'm going to say I want a new Arduino project call it Temp Reader and I'm now going to open that file in here. Now if we scroll down a bit these includes aren't quite right. Uh, what we need to do is copy some other code in, just paste it in there, and it's slightly different. If you can see, uh, the um, essentially it's including the Arduino Arduino.h. So that now makes the library work in Arduino. How do we include the library in our Arduino project? Well, I'm using Visual Studio with the Visual Micro plugin. And all we need to do is add Arduino library core and then pick the DHT22 because it's enumerated our, our libraries folder for us. So we do that and it pops the include in the top. So what do we do next? Well, first thing we need to do is fire up the serial port in the Arduino. So we'll do that. Um, the second thing we need is an instance of the DHT22. And that's going to be global to the whole program. So we'll put that up here, DHT22, DHT22, open brackets 22. What this is going to do is it's creating a variable in our program called DHT22 in lowercase of type DHT22 in uppercase. And the uppercase, this, this section here is, is actually a class that's defined in the library. And we're passing it 22, which is the pin number that I've plug the data thing into. So if we go back to the data sheet, uh, the data signal is pin 2 coming out of the, the plastic package and I've connected that pin to pin 22 on my Arduino. Okay, so that's cool. Um, so we do the serial begin. Now, in the loop, the first thing we need to do is issue a read instruction to the DHT22. That tells it to read the data um, and it stores it in its, its sort of its internal buffer. So I'm now going to make two variables, uh, two uh, floating point variables, temperature and humidity, and I'm going to fill those in with the temperature and humidity which I get from the DHT22. So these commands actually read the buffer from the white plastic box and pops it into this variable. Um, we then want to actually send it back to um, down the serial port. So we pick up the serial port commands. So we've got serial print temperature and then print line uh, temperature C comma 1. 
Now this comma 1 means we just want to print it out to one decimal place. We then do the same thing with the humidity. We print humidity equals and then we print a line with the humidity value in it. So just to recap, we instantiate a new instance of the DHT22. We read the data out of the DHT22 into the DHT22's buffer. Uh, we suck the temperature and the humidity values out of that buffer and into the floating point variables we've set up and then we send those variables down the serial port so we can actually see them on the computer. Now one final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a delay in here because otherwise it will read it and spit out the data very quickly indeed. We don't want to do that so we'll just read it once a second. If I press F5 it uploads that program to the Arduino. If we now open the serial port monitor tool we can see, once it gets itself sorted out, that the temperature and the humidity values are being pushed out to the serial port. Now, if I go over to the sensor and I blow on it, we see the humidity value goes up because my breath is very humid. And then flap our hand near it we see the humidity value goes back down again. So that's great. So we've written a program using the DHT22 library to read the data into a couple of variables and spit it out down the COM port. So how do we now read that in a program that runs on our PC? OK, this is a little bit more complicated. So we go back into a new copy of Visual Studio and we'll do a new project. And this is going to be a Windows Forms application and it will call it Weather Station. And as you can see, I'm saving this straight onto my Google Drive, so I'm immediately backed up on the internet. So OK, and it opens a simple program with only a form. If we press play, it runs it and opens the form. It's not very exciting. So first of all, we need a couple of text boxes to actually display the information on the window. why it sometimes defaults to tiny text boxes I'll never know but anyway we'll select those two text boxes and we'll just make them read only so they go grey now we need some we'll need to give them some names so we know which one's which we'll call that TB temp and we'll call this this one TB hume for humidity programmers don't like typing out things more than they have to if we double click on the form uh, we can see the code and there isn't a lot of code there at the moment so I'm going to make some variables um, a couple of variables here to store the the current temperature and the current humidity and more importantly um, one to store the COM port so I'm declaring a COM port um, I'm passing it to COM3 because I happen to know I'm connected to COM3 and I'm calling it obj serial and declaring it with events which means we can the serial port generates events when things happen. So if we click here on the uh, obj serial and we can see the events that happen. So if we pick data received, we can uh, we have uh, a stub appears. Now this procedure will get called in a separate thread every time the serial port reads some data, see it receives some data. So when it receives some data, what we want to do is the first command is we create a string variable and we use the obj serial read line so we'll just read one line out of the incoming data um, now uh, what we then now want to do is is decide whether it's um if we, so just one moment if we go back into uh, into the temp reader we can see that we're sticking out temp equals and hume equals so we need to decide which of those two lines it is that we we've actually read so if the a string contains the word temp then it must be the uh, the temperature line so the next line of code will do is to sorry that was confusing uh, we will edit the string to just strip out the temp equals bit now if the string is well, that's left over, which should be the numeric, the, the numeric part of the temperature. If it is indeed numeric, 
then we can set the current temperature equals convert to double the string. So that's fine. Then we do the same thing again by saying else if it contains hume then we get rid of the hume bit and if is numeric what's left over which should just be the the numeric part of the humidity uh, we set the current humidity equal to convert to double the string cool so just to recap this procedure is fired automatically in a separate thread every time the COM port receives some data. We read the line out into the string. If the string starts with temp, then we remove the temp equals part from the string and convert it into a number and store it in current temp. If on the other hand it's the humidity, we do the same thing with hum equals. Now, the one thing you can't do in Visual Studio is if you're in a separate thread you can't actually go and update those text boxes so I can't do a command in here which says text box temperature dot text equals current temp dot to string I can't do that I'll get an error because this procedure is running on a separate thread to the one that's updating the GUI so we have to muck around a little bit um, first of all we need what we need is a bit of code that looks like this down the bottom. Uh, we declare a uh, procedure called update the humidity box, passing it a, a string that we want to go into the humidity box, and we have a line of code that sets the uh, humidity box text to to be that that string. And then we create something mysterious called a delegate, which you just do like that, and trust me, it works. What you then do is in the humidity part here we invoke that delegate so let's just get rid of the toolbox so we've got a bit more width to play with um, <coughs> we then do the same thing to update the temperature box create the delegate create the procedure and call it over there. So this line of code will uh, basically invoke an update of the text box on the GUI thread and not on this thread. It looks a bit confusing but trust me it works. The principle we're trying to demonstrate is that we've read the serial data off of the Arduino, pulled the temperature and the humidity out of it and pushed it into text boxes but we have to muck around a little bit with delegates to do that because we're on a separate thread. The reason we use the with events separate thread, um, you might be wondering, um, obviously you, you'd have thought all this nonsense complicates things, but by having it run on a separate thread, it means that our GUI, our, our window, which is going to be doing some other things, I hope, we need that to stay responsive and not tied up with reading the serial port. Now there's one more bit of code we need to add in before we can run the program. Up here in the form load event we need to set the board rate to 57600 which if you remember was the same board rate we set in the Arduino code so both ends of the serial port are talking at the same speed and then we need to actually open the COM port. If we then run the program we see it gets filled in with the temperature values and the humidity value. If I now go and blow on that again we see the humidity value shoots up. So we've now got a Windows Forms application reading the data from the Arduino, which is in turn reading it from the DHT22 sensor. So, whilst our program is running, if we like, we can stick a breakpoint in. If we stick the breakpoint about here, it soon hits it, and we can see at the current temperature and inspect the variables. Actually, if I stick the breakpoint just there, we can see that the string that's been read in is temperature equals 23.9. Our first command gets rid of the temperature equals part, 
and leaves us with 23.9 in the string. If that string is numeric, which it is, we convert the string to a double and stick it in current temperature. So current temperature now equals 23.9 and then we call the delegate to update the text box. It really is as simple as that. So just to recap, we've got a DHT22 sensor. Now that could be attached anywhere in the, on the building or outside or, or indoors. And that's connected to the Arduino. Pin 1 is connected to the power. Pin 2 is connected to pin 22. Pins 3 and 4 connected to the ground. In our Arduino program, we simply open the serial port, read the data off the DHT22, stick it down the serial port, and then we will use a Windows Forms application to read that data off the serial box and display it in two boxes on the window. And that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say here, so thank you very much and have fun.